Something strange happened this month. I found myself attracting less than pleasant experiences that meant dealing with uncomfortable confrontations. Not so surprising, considering we are in the month of Elul, right before Rosh Hashanah, and our sages say that at the end of the year, you experience all of your tikkunim, your spiritual fixings. So you may find that you're, at this time, receiving a lot of money or losing a lot of money, getting parking tickets, something unfortunate happens, you lose something valuable, things can start to appear to go haywire. But as my soul sister, Neely Salem, shared in her weekly Parsha class this week, there is actually a spiritual reason for that. Because on Rosh Hashanah, Hashem, God, decrees everything we are going to get for the whole upcoming year. And so any tikkun, any spiritual fixing we needed to experience, or whatever money we needed to get or lose, gets balanced at the end of the year so that we can actually head into the new year with a clear slate. Trust me, you wouldn't want to bring any negative tikkunim into the following year with you. So if you're experiencing some messy situations at the moment, See it as a sign of blessing that you are purging and releasing everything necessary in order to manifest the following year from a clean place. For me personally, this month was filled with spiritual tikkunim, which is another way of saying I had some really uncomfortable experiences. One situation was between my toddler's daycare, where the woman who runs the facility told me that the price suddenly doubled overnight with no previous warning. That was a fun confrontation. (laughs) Just kidding. Another confrontation was with my neighbor who asked that we shut off our air conditioning unit because the noise prevented her from being able to sleep. Mind you, we live in the desert and it's middle of the summer heat right now. (laughs) The next uncomfortable situation had to do with trying to return a brand new coffee grinder that arrived broken and the company refused to take it back. And another scenario, and this one really (laughs) takes the cake, was that my husband had to spend a day this month in the emergency room. That was really scary. Each of these scenarios caused me to be extra susceptible to spiraling downwards mentally and emotionally. Now, if you've been listening to me for a while, you already know that being in joy is the energy you need to manifest positive scenarios. Even though I can acknowledge that all of these situations are a blessing in disguise, and they all happened at once for me because of the timing of the year we're currently in, this doesn't mean that I want to sit back and accept them with open arms. Each experience still serves as a divine lesson from above, in which Hashem, God, is the divine teacher, trying to show me something that I'm meant to be working on inside of myself so that I don't bring the same old, same old patterns and habits into the following year. So it goes without saying that I must have been blocking joy by experiencing some other unpleasant emotion, which is the reason I attracted one unpleasant experience after another. Now, mind you, I am someone who considers herself a person who lives with a manifestation mindset. I mean, this is what I teach for God's sakes. This means that I try to think positively as often as possible and focus my attention and awareness on that which I want to attract. I pop negative thought bubbles and replace them with positive thoughts, and I try to be super conscious to make sure that I don't speak words of negativity. So when these uncomfortable scenarios came my way, I really took it as an opportunity to look inside myself and ask, Where am I out of alignment? What is God asking me to look at within myself in order to get me back on track? Let's face it, I'm human. I try my best to live the manifestation work, but sometimes I slip. 
And I take the fall as an opportunity to get back onto my manifestation tightrope. Whenever I find myself out of alignment, meaning attracting unpleasant scenarios, I know that in some way I am playing a role as a co-creator of my reality, meaning I am somewhat responsible for the outcome. Rabbi Nachman teaches in Likutei Sichot 62, he says that human thought has tremendous potential. When thought is intensely concentrated, it can exert great influence. Every faculty of the mind, both conscious and unconscious, down to the innermost point, must be focused without distraction. When you do this, your thoughts can actually force something to take place. Now, because I wholeheartedly believe in the Yiddish phrase, Zeint gut tracht gut, if you think good, it will be good, I also know that when the mind starts to go on its tangents of negative thinking, we attract unpleasant experiences. So I came up with a method I call looking for the three C's. This is a powerful way for you to get more easily pinpointed, to more easily target your thoughts when they start to get out of control. The three C's that interfere with your ability to manifest more positive outcomes are one, complaining, two, controlling, three, comparing. Let's start with complaining. When you complain, you are physically blocking abundance and positive experiences from entering your life because ultimately what you're saying, whether conscious or unconsciously, is that I am ungrateful for my current situation. I don't accept what is right now. Jewish wisdom teaches that a truly happy person is one who is happy with what he or she already has. So notice where in your life you find yourself complaining about your circumstances and start to tell yourself that everything is meant to be the way it is right now. The second C Control. When you control a situation, you are incapable of experiencing miracles because ultimately what you're saying is, God, I don't need you. I got this. I'm in the driver's seat. Move over. I'm in control. This is a very lonely road to creating miracles because when you tell source that I'm in control, that means you're not open to receiving his divine guidance. So notice where in your life today you might be trying to control a particular outcome. And the third C is compare. When you experience yourself comparing your life or what you have or don't have to someone else's, you're ultimately saying to God's universe that there is not enough to go around. This puts the creator in a limiting box because you're living with the consciousness that there is no such thing as abundance. If this person has X, then I clearly can't have it also. That's a terribly false cognition and a huge blockage to experiencing miracles. Remember, abracadabra. It's Aramaic and it translates to, it gets created in my speech. If you utter words or think thoughts that are of limiting supply, Meaning, if you think there's a limiting supply of husbands and that person has a husband, so I can't have it, or if they have it, why should I have it, right? Or this person has a beautiful home or has this many clients, why should I have the beautiful home? Or if they have all the clients, then they're taking all of what I can get for myself. Ultimately, this cognition attracts limitation. A cognition of limitation attracts limitation, So notice in what situations you might be comparing yourself to somebody else. So to sum it up, a question. In what areas of your life are you holding on to one or all of the three C's? And now let it go. No, really, let it go. All of it. Right now, flip the script. Choose to see God in any negative scenario and you instantly raise your vibration to one of manifesting potential. 
Sharing is caring. So if you liked what you heard, pay it forward. Share this with a friend. And as always, happy manifesting. Happy manifesting.